Privyat Sikram. Hello. Uh, welcome to my first live stream. This is going to be an interesting little experiment. So be patient with me. Hopefully it all works. Hopefully uh, <clears throat> the baby isn't crying in the background. If she is, I'll bring her and you can meet her. So we are going to be starting uh, every Monday. We're going to start learning Russian the way I learned Russian back in 2003. So back in 2003, there was no YouTube. There was no app for learning Russian. Uh, so what I used to do, I had, I had three things. I had the internet. I could get on and look up um, Russian music, Russian poems. And then I had a dictionary. Look, I still to this day have this dictionary, my adorable little dictionary. There it is. That's the dictionary that I used to learn Russian. And I had a textbook for kind of trying to make sense of grammar. So today we're going to learn Russian the way I learned Russian, which is with poetry and music. And today, since this is Pushkin's Dien Rajdenia, Dien Rajdenia Pushkina, uh, Pushkin's birthday, in honor of the great poet, we are going to take a really beautiful and simple Russian poem. So we're going to go first through the poem. I'll read it. You there can practice reading it yourself. Then... We're going to pick it apart. So let me turn on my camera. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. There we go. I've got my document camera. So here's the poem laid out. This poem is called Ya Vas Yubil, um, which in English might be translated, and you can tell me what you think uh, is a good translation. Um, uh, is maybe like, I loved you once. So this is about when you love someone and they don't necessarily love you back, right? So we're going to go through and we're going to read the, the words. And then we're going to go through and we're going to come up with each individual English word. It's not going to be pretty, okay? When I translate this word for word, it's not going to sound pretty. That's where you guys can help me with this. Then, so that's going to be in red, like word for word English. Blue is going to be the original dictionary form. So like back in 2003, if you were if you were 19 year old Janie, what you would find in the dictionary when you go to look up the word lubil, right? If you went to the dictionary to try to look that up, you're not going to find that exact version. You're going to find lubit, for example. So we're going to do that. And then as we go, we're going to kind of verbally, we'll say out loud what we think is a more beautiful translation of this. So let's get started. And I will analyze the grammar as well. So here we go. We're going to get started. So you can repeat with me, practice your pronunciation. Uh, okay, here we go. Ya vas lubil. Lubov yisho bit mojet. В душе моей угасла не совсем. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go word for word in English. Like I said, this is going to look, it's going to sound so awkward in English. So I, you, loved already. It's sounding horrible, right? Любовь. Любовь means love. Еще, there should be two dots here. So, ye sure, still, but to be, <laughs> может, can. And when you put these two together, a better translation is uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, next, v duše maye. So, this means in. Soul, my. Okay, and then lastly, ugasla is like uh, to die out, to die out, to like. All right, let's go. Died out, not entirely. Okay. So there we go. So, so far, this poem is sounding really horrible in English, right? Let's go through and pick apart the grammar as well. Um, here we go. 
Ja, was liebe. So super interesting cultural thing right here. When you had a crush on somebody back in the old days, in the, let's see, this would have been the 19th century, you spoke formally to them until you guys were married and then you would switch into informal. So you start out formally with this person. So notice he's speaking to this person informal. Ja, was lubio. So was is the accusative case of we. You're doing something to the person. You're loving them. So they're getting was. The original of lubio, this is a super easy one. Hopefully you guys know this one, is lubit. But in this context, it's getting past tense. Okay. Next. Любов еще быть может. Может is the conjugation of the verb much, meaning to be able to, to can. Um, and then nothing else really grammatically here is, is happening. But I just want to point out that the word любов, this is going to come in handy later, is a feminine, okay? That's gonna, keep that in mind, because that's gonna come in handy in just a minute. Привет, Игорь. Я вас вижу тоже. Okay, so, <clears throat> another thing here. So this is where we're gonna start getting a case. We're gonna get prepositional case here. In, the original of soul was душа. Not to be confused with douche, which is the shower. Okay, you didn't love this person in your shower. I mean, maybe you did, but you love them more in your soul. So dusha, that's the prepositional ending. Maye, the original of maye, because this was a feminine, would have been a maya. Maya. So real quick, interesting cultural thing here. And you guys can tell me what you think here. When you love somebody in Russian, you do it more with your soul. Again, if you don't agree, feel free to comment. Uh, you do it more with your soul. Whereas in English, what do we love somebody with? We don't love, we, that's weird to say this, that you love somebody with all your soul. For example, in English, we say instead, I love you with all my heart, or I felt that love in my heart. So in Russian, you could say more dusha, that's where love comes from. And in English, love comes from more of the heart. So I'm going to go here and actually say that the better translation of dusha right here is heart. It sounds a little bit prettier in English because soul sounds weird in Russian. Здравствуйте. We've got uh, Georgios here, uh, Kalimera. Uh, I know he speaks Greek as well, so nice to see you. Let's see. So, in my soul, ugasla, ugasla. What was the original form of ugasla? This original verb, if you were to look it up in the dictionary, would have been ugasnut, ugasnut, and it's. That, that love is going out, okay? So remember how I told you Lubov was feminine? That explains why we got a la, past tense ending. Woo -woo. Okay, that's why it's important to know the gender of the nouns you're using. And then here we don't have anything happening grammatically, nothing interesting. So ugasla ni savsim. Okay, so now we're gonna go over this and try and make this beautiful. It's really hard to translate Russian poetry. That's why you've just got to learn Russian because Pushkin, it just doesn't translate, but it's so beautiful in Russian. So here we go. <clears throat> I loved you once and perhaps that love, notice in English, we have to mess with the word order so that it doesn't sound weird. And perhaps that love in my heart has still not died out entirely. Okay, next page. Okay, so let's go through and read it first, and then we'll go through and dissect it. No, pust Anna was bolshe nie trevožit. Ja ni hachu kichali was niche. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do the English word for word. It's gonna be ugly. Here we go. But May. She. <laughs> this already <laughs> does not make any sense in English. 
you anymore bother or you guys if you don't agree with um ah uh, spasibo georgios uh if you don't agree with how i'm translating privojit let me know in the in the comments cuz this can be translated in multiple way i'd say bother maybe trouble someone to trouble someone that's more poetic sounding uh yeah ni khachu oh this one's good this is a super easy phrase in russian i don't want okay this next one is a verb which would be in english like to sadden to sadden you uh this literally if we go literally these would be with anything or with nothing with anything with nothing and there's a much better translation for that which would be like in any in anywhere in any way okay here we go so there's our super ugly english translation now we're going to pick apart the grammar uh what okay here we go so no no fancy grammar happening there Pust ana. Pust is a really difficult word to translate. It's like, just let it be like that. Like, just let it, let that happen. Let that be. So, no pust ana. Okay. So, for you Russian speakers, you guys all know what ana is referring to. But, for English speakers, you, who's she? Who is she? Who, who, where, who are we talking about all of a sudden? Who is she? This is really confusing for English speakers when Russians will call inanimate objects or things a he or a she. We don't do that. In English, everything is an it, right? So who is this she referring to? Leave in the comments if you know what it's referring to. Who is she? Who is the she? Who should is not going to bother? What do you think? I'll give you just a second to think about it. Who do you, who do you not want to bother this person anymore? Who is she? Anyone? Everybody's being shy. <gasps> Молодец, Joseph. Молодец. Очень хорошо. So why? Why is the love? This is why, remember when I told you that love is a feminine? That's why I told you. One, because it affected this verb. And two, because... Right here, we were going to suddenly have this she. And if you didn't know that любов is a feminine, you'd be very confused. So, so may she, you, not anymore, other. So this verb, the, inf the infinitive of this verb is like that. And like I said, it means to bother some. So may she not bother you anymore. May that love not bother you anymore. Ya ni chachu, super easy. The original verb of chachu is chachet. Ya chachu, te chochesh, on chochet, me chachim, ve chachitia, itak dale. And then pichali, that's already in its dictionary form. We don't need to do anything there. Vas, again, that's the accusative. You're doing something to the person, so you're making them sad. That's why we get vas here and not vi, for example. Now, nichem, this is the, this means nothing. And this is the instrumental of nishto, nichivo, meaning nothing. And in this case, you're going to be, you're going to be saying like, by, I don't want to sadden you with anything or in any way, I think. That, that I don't want to sadden you in any way when we do, is how I would translate that. Okay? So let's see all of this again uh, with English. No, pust ana, but may that love, we have to refer back to that love, or I guess we in English we could say it, right? So may that love not trouble you anymore. I don't want to sadden you in any way. I would say it like that. I don't want to sadden you in any way. Okay, next line. 
Here we go. He repeats himself. Я вас любил безмолвно, безнадежно, то робостью, то ревностью, таймим. Okay, we've got some fun words in here, very poetic words that I'd love to see some of your translates on. Let's see. Oh, people are being so sweet. Fake Russian. What is a fake Russian, Alexei? <laughs> I don't even know what a fake Russian is. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead. We've got bismolvna, which is a very poetic word. And tamim is a very poetic word, which is not necessarily spoken in everyday speech. Um, but we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> so here we go. Again, we see this repeated. Ya vas lubil bezmolvna, beznadezhna, to robostiu, to revnostiu, tamim. Okay. Again, I you loved. I'm not going to even write out on that. Bezmolvna. Okay. So I was telling one of my students the other day. When you see these in all, in all, in all, in all, these are adverbs. These are adverbs. How you do a verb. Do you do it quickly? Do you do it uh, silently, hopelessly? Okay, so when you see no, most of the time, it's either a, just a neuter, it is, or it's describing how you do a verb. So let's talk about this. Bezmolvna. This is a fun word. In old Russian, mov was speaking. So maybe you think bez means without speaking. How do you translate that? Bezmolvna. Bezmolvna. Anyone? So old Russian, mov meant to speak. And this means without. Without speaking. I think a nice translation of this would be silently, right? Silently. So without speaking. So I loved you without speaking. So silently. Beznadezhna. If, maybe you guys can think of this. Nadezhna, nadezhna, nadezhda in Russian is hope. And bez means without. So what would the English word be? Ooh, mutely, Georgios, Maladiets, mutely. Very good. That's nice. Like he, he couldn't even, he was, couldn't even bring himself to say it. Um, so if, uh, ooh, speechlessly. Oh, you guys are so poetic. <clears throat> so, beznadezhna, beznadezhna. How would we translate this word? Without hope, i.e., hopelessly so speechlessly hopelessly okay this next part's getting into fancy grammar oh i don't know how to translate this cool maybe you guys could help me with it maybe an either i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna leave off the cool for right now unless somebody helps me with it okay so tos robes to Shyness, shyness, timidity, okay? Revnestu, jealousy. And then this next word, tamim, is, I've never heard it in spoken speech, but it means um, like so thirsty that you're, like you can't even function, right? So you might, you might see it translated as, um, uh, thirsty or, for example, oppressed. Like you, you want something so badly that you can't even function necessarily. Okay, so let's come back up here. I, you loved. I, you loved. Okay, here we go. Let's take it apart. Okay, bismolvna. So as I already told you, this is an adverb. The original, if you were to look it up in the dictionary, is going to be the masculine form. Bismolvni. Bismolvni. That's what you find when you look up adjectives or adverbs in the dictionary is the original masculine. Here we go. Biz. Nah. 
Me, masculine version. Okay, the original. So what we're, what's happening here is we're getting instrumental case and instrumental feminines that end in a miakismak get this you. For example, if you're signing off a letter and you want to say with love, you would say slubovu because lubov was a feminine ending in a miakismak. We add on a you on the end. Uh, oh, and by the way, when you say at night, nochu, you're saying the same concept, nochu. Okay, so robus was the original. And then just a real quick uh, life hack for Russian gender. Did you know that all nouns, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, double dish, Double dish. <laughs> I don't know what he's referring to. Um, did you know that all nouns, again, correct me if I'm wrong, ending in estimyakiznak in Russian are feminine. So that's just a life hack. You don't even need to um, you don't even need to look up the gender of those. If you see ost on the end of a noun in Russian, it's feminine. Okay, so the original is robust, revnost, and then we're putting it into instrumental because you're saying you're saying that you were oppressed by means of the shyness, by pre oppressed by means of the jealousy. So if you have, if you have an instrumental without a preposition, can be by means of. For example, ya pishu flomasteram. Ya pishu. Flow master. I'm writing by means of a marker right now. Okay, so here we go. Let's make a pretty translation of this. I loved you once silently, hopelessly, oppressed by shyness and jealousy. Um, hi, Sajad. Nice to see you. So this person is very tormented by this love. Maybe he's horrifically shy, doesn't dare say anything. But he's obviously given up on this because he says, yeah, vas ilubil. He's past tense. So he's decided nothing's ever going to come of this love. And let's see what happens next. <clears throat> Here we go. So back to I, you, loved. Okay, we're seeing adverbs here, so let's translate these. So, so if you just see the word ta in front of an adverb, we're going to translate it as so, 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 <laughs> said it with a Russian accent. We're going to we're going to translate it as so. If you see ta koi, then we translate that as such. Okay, so when it's just ta, we're going to translate it as so. So genuinely, so nežna ludi pomagite. This is a hard word to translate. Nežna, oh, it just doesn't translate into English. It means like lovingly, tenderly, affectionately. So I'm going to do lovingly. I like the word lovingly here. So genuinely, so lovingly. Okay, and if we just go literally, how give <laughs> you <laughs> God loved, I mean, I'm going to call this beloved, to be another. See how this makes no sense whatsoever in English. It makes no sense. Ooh, gently. Yes, I like that. Tenderly. Um, ooh, I, I, yes, I like gently. I, I'm, fe I'm feeling gently. I like that one. So we could do so genuinely, so gently. Oh, and then it sounds good. Like so genuinely, so gently. That sounds good. Yes, I'm going to change this one too. Gently. That sounds beautiful. Okay, so this last sentence makes positively no sense whatsoever if you don't speak Russian. So we're going to take it apart. So the original of Lubil, you guys already know. If you don't know by now, I'm not doing my job. Lubit. 
Tak iskrena. Remember, with adverbs, the original is going to be the masculine full adjective. Iskreni. Nezni. Nezni is an all purpose word. You can definitely add that to your list of adjectives that you learn in your first your first year. Um, the, your first year of learning Russian because you see it all over the place. Okay, so the original dictionary form of these words down here are that, to give, we, you. So what we're getting here, and I'll, I'll go through and I'll tell you what we're getting. God, same, and then we was the original here. So what's happening with the grammar? The grammar, okay? When you do this, this is a command. Daj. Dajte pozhalsta. Dajte pozhalsta. So that's something you need to say in Russian. <laughs> Alexei says it doesn't make sense in English, but it makes sense in human. Very good. Oh, thank you. Spasiba, Georg. That's a soft N. Iskreni. That's right. Um, okay. So... So die is a is a command, but when you say die vam bok, die bok, nie die bok, it means like a, oh, geez, how would you how would we say this in English? Nie die bok što on umriot, na primer. Oh, I don't even know how to say this in English. Like God forbid. There we go. There we go. So if you say nie die bok, it would be God forbid, but. Um, May God grant you is would be this one. So, book. May God grant to you. Die book. Die book. May God grant to you to be loved. So we have our our to be down here. So to be beloved or loved like that. Drugim. Okay. For people who don't understand Russian, this makes no sense. I, for the longest time, could not understand this line. So we're going to take a moment and do some Russian grammar. We're going to talk about passive participles in Russian, okay? These in English translate as the thing that is or was blank. Okay, so for example, lubit, we take off, we, we have, there we have the we conjugation, lubim. We're going to take that off and from there we get the infinitive, lubit. So the thing that is loved, right? The thing that is loved. So right here, may God grant you to be the thing that is loved, to be the thing that is loved. But now we got to solve the riddle of why did this get instrumental case. Why? Why instrumental case? We'll come back to it. So, how would we translate this word? How would you translate that word? Do you see the verb in it? Do you see the verb located within it? And what is that verb? I'm going to call on Yosef. Because I'm going to pick on him because it's his birthday. So everybody tell Joseph, happy birthday. What is the verb inside this participle? Does anybody see it? Yes, maladiets, Joseph, maladiets. Um, so, chi tat. So, this comes from the verb chi tat. Now, let's read this book. Samaye chitayemye rasiyanami knigi v 2021 gatu. So, how would we translate this sentence? Notice, the thing that is read, the person that read it is going to get instrumental case. So the most read by Russians, by means of Russians, books in, the tw in 2021. Oh, so sweet. Happy birthday. Uh, good. So same thing down here. Here we go. Napisane, это известное произведение, написанное толстое. Theme. Look at that. Talstim is getting, Talstoy is getting instrumental case 
because the book was written by Tolstoy. The book was written by Tolstoy. The books are being read by Russians, okay? So now with that in mind, we come back and translate this last line, okay? So we now know this is not dative case. This looks like dative case, but it's not. It's instrumental case. It's going to translate as by, okay? So here we go. Uh, here we go. So, как дай вам Бог любимый быть другим. May God grant you to be loved like that. In English, we would have to add like a like that. May God grant you to be loved like that by another. So this guy's nice, right? He's not like psycho and like, if I can't have her, no one can have her. No, he wants you to, he's giving up on you, but he wants, he hopes that in your life you find somebody who loves you the way that he loved you. Okay, so let's now do the whole poem one last time. If you have any last questions for me, please leave them in the comments or please comment uh, and I'll go ahead and answer those. Let me know also, what are your favorite Pushkin poems? I have one more Pushkin poem scheduled um, for not next week, but the week after. Next week, we're doing a song, Krasnaya Dayoka. So I hope to see you back. Uh, also, like I said, ask me some questions in the comments if you have any. Otherwise, we're gonna go through this one last time. And that will be all for today. So here we go. So, я вас любил. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. That what? Okay. Я вас любил, любовь еще быть может. В душе моей угасла не совсем. I loved you once, and maybe that love in my heart has not died out entirely. Но пусть она вас больше не тревожит, я не хочу печалить вас ничем. But may it no longer bother you, I don't want to sadden you in any way. Я вас любил безмолвно, безнадежно, то робостью, то ревностью, то мим. I once loved you speechlessly, I like that word, hopelessly, with shyness. No, oppressed and tormented by shyness and jealousy. Я вас любил так искренно, так нежно, как дай вам Бог любимый быть другим. I loved you so genuinely, so gently. May God grant you to be loved like that by another. Все. Очень хорошо. О, мурашки, да? If, if for no other reason to learn Russian, like you should have a million reasons to want to learn Russian. But, oh yes, good, faded out, ugasla, good. I like that, I like space biker, I like ugasla to fade out because we're talking about, it's the same verb for when you like put out a candle, right? If I, um, uh, if I remember right, like you, a candle goes out to fade away. Good. See, there's lots of different ways we can do that to fade out. Like, if you think of like a candle, it's still kind of dimly, dimly flickering in your in your heart of love. Um, so good. Happy birthday to Pushkin. Let me answer some of your questions if you have any. I can feel a Russian binge watch <laughs> coming on. Oh, thank you. Good. I hope you like stuff. Um, I hope that was useful. Like I said, next week we are going to do Prikrasny and Um the music, and then next Thursday I'll record, I'll release a video of me singing the song. Lots of people have requested Prikrasny and Dalyoka, so I have been working on it. I taught myself the song, and I'll record a video. And next Monday we will do the, we'll go through the song together, and then the next. Thursday, I'll release the recording of the video. And then let's see, when when it's time for Biele and Nochi, White Nights, I'm going to read one of my favorite sections of Mjernif the, um, the bronze horseman. And to answer Georgia's question about 
I honestly think it's from music. I honestly think that it's from music because I have I feel music deeply, and if I'm singing in Russian, then I feel the language and the music deeply. So I don't know. Maybe that's where I have a strong feeling of Russian. Plus, I love poetry in English as well. I love music in English. I love music in every language. So I think maybe that helps add um, feeling to it. So I don't see any more questions. Let me know. Do you do translations? I mean, not very good ones. Obviously, I, I struggled with this one, but like, <laughs> Peter, I just went to Nine Inch Nails concert in Philadelphia two weeks ago. So that was rock on. Musica. Da. Здравствуйте. Good. Sergey. Hopefully you're fluent after that. Вот. Спасибо. This is so fun. Это очень весело смотреть, что у меня все наши, все мои друзья по YouTube. Спасибо. Очень приятно. Yeah, so come back next week. We'll do the song Прекрасная далёка. And then the week after is when we will do uh, It Needs a Feeling for Art. Okay, Alexi, you can email me at collegerushman at gmail.com. I can give it a try. Just let me know. Uh, so I hope to see you guys all next Monday as well. I think that went successfully and that was super fun. And it was fun to have our own little YouTube party here. So, хорошо, с днем рождения. Пушкина и с днем рождения Джозефа. До свидания. Муа, полуем.